Welcome to Thimbleberry U, a podcast about Thimbleberry Financial. I'm Michelle O'Dell, your host, and with me, of course, is President and Financial Advisor, Amy Walls. Hi, Michelle. We've got a lot to talk about today and some big words. Uh, so we're going to talk. <laughs> Everybody better pull out their dictionaries. Yeah, get the, you know, that's the beautiful thing. You're going to explain it. But this is what we're talking about. Which advisor is a fiduciary? Explain to our listeners what a fiduciary is. It's a great question. And I think even the dictionary, while it makes it clear, it isn't always understandable. And this is something I think there's confusion about within financial services. And so it makes sense that there would be confusion amongst consumers. So a fiduciary at its basic core is someone who is legally obligated to act in the best interest of their clients at all times. And I think one would think that we'd expect that in financial services, but it is not the rule across the board. Mm -hmm. Within our industry, financial services, if a financial professional is a fiduciary, is determined by who the regulatory body is that oversees the work they are doing. Which regulatory body oversees the work really comes down to how the client pays for the services. Okay. Now, my personal opinion, and and one of the things we can definitely talk about today is there's also a simpler way. <laughs> okay, well then here's the, the follow-up question here. The first two are around the idea that it comes down to how the client pays. So what are the options and how does that impact if someone is a fiduciary? So there's kind of three groups of advisors, if you will. And I think most research I've done on this, just generally like is, trying to look at it as if I were a consumer, says that there's two. The third often gets left out of things. And I think that the reason for that is pretty straightforward. If we can boil things down into black and white, we make things look a lot better and a lot simpler. So okay. I'm going to talk about the first two first that most of my research shows up with. And then I'm going to talk about the third. So the first are fee-only financial professionals. These are advisors that charge a fee for their services they do not receive commissions or any other form of compensation for selling financial products. Okay. So ideally what this means is that their advice is not influenced by the commission because they're not getting a commission that they'd receive for selling a particular product. Okay. It's like a flat rate. Yeah. They can okay. charge a flat fee, like you just said, an hourly mm -hmm. rate or a percentage of the assets under management. Okay. As a result of not having that commission that they get paid directly, they are considered to have fewer conflicts of interest, okay. which is why then when an advisor is doing work under, you know, this fee arena, that's why they're considered a fiduciary. So this is an advisor that generally is considered a fiduciary within financial okay. services. The second group are the commission-based financial professionals. So the complete opposite of what we just talked about. So this is when I say these are the two that you're going to see or at least I've found when trying to research from a consumer point of view that I find it's the black and the white. Mm -hmm. So these advisors receive commissions for selling financial products. So oftentimes mutual funds, annuities, insurance policies. They may have an incentive to recommend products that generate a higher commission, even if that's not the best choice for the client. They don't charge a fee for their services because they're entirely paid off of the commissions. So the third group is what's fee, called fee-based or a hybrid financial professional. Okay. This is somebody that really sits in the middle of these two groups. And this is where these are harder to understand and actually find information about because it's, it's this kind of gray area, if you want. I am a hybrid financial professional. I can mm -hmm. do fee work, and I can do commission-based work. So we merge these two. 95, 99% of what we do is on the fee side. Okay. We charge a fee for our services. We charge for financial planning. We charge a percentage of assets for the assets we manage. And sometimes it makes sense that a client needs some sort of vehicle that doesn't need us to monitor it. And so for me to charge a percentage of assets on that when it doesn't need monitoring and we don't have work to do around it is not in our client's best interest. Right. Okay. And therefore, then paying a commission for that actually makes more sense. 
It's better for the client. So I am very happy to be able to be a hybrid and look at both worlds because there are some types of, I call them vehicles versus products that could go either way Mm. between fee only or commission. And the commission can end up being less expensive for our clients. That makes a whole lot of sense. Now, that's a lot for the consumers to sort through. You mentioned an easier way. What is the, (laughs) please tell us the easier way. (laughs) Yeah, the easier way, I think, is to always make sure that you, the person that someone chooses to work with is a CFP professional, a certified financial planner. These folks have voluntarily agreed to a fiduciary standard across all of the work they do with clients. And I know I'm sitting in the seat as a hybrid, but I think that in this world and having that viewpoint, it makes even more sense if you're working with a CFP to try to seek out somebody who is a hybrid over somebody who is fee only or commission based. So then let me understand that last statement. Why does this make the fee based advisor a potentially better option? Nobody knows what they don't know. And that is also true of financial professionals. I'd love to be able to sit here, Michelle, and tell you that, hey, you know, we know what we don't know, but we don't have that secret sauce. Like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) if we're the same as everybody else, we just have a depth of knowledge in this area that makes us a financial professional. Mm -hmm. So the fee-based or hybrid advisor has a unique value proposition in that they can see and have hands-on experience with both fee and commission products that their clients can benefit from. So they are in a position to understand and explain when a commission might actually be a better choice for a client in a particular situation. An advisor that's only been in the fee only space, for example, may not have a wide enough view of the world to understand really how the commission based vehicles work and what that means for the clients to be able to say and understand that the commission based may be of benefit periodically to a client. Exactly. It doesn't make these advisors bad. It's just mm-hmm. a lack of exposure to what else might be out there. And when you sit on one side of the fence, it's hard to see what's on the other side of the fence. And just like I said, I have bias that can contribute to bias on the, the part of the fee only advisors. And then if you're working with a CFP and they're a fiduciary on all work with clients, no matter of their fee structure, then why not choose someone who sits in the middle and can see both sides of that fence? Exactly. So if being a hybrid fee-based financial professional wasn't an option, what would you do also knowing that you are a CFP professional? Yeah, it's a great question because I've thought about what happens like if our industry goes certain ways. Of the two options, I'd choose to be fee only. Okay. Being a fiduciary in that sense, it's absolutely the better choice. And like I said earlier, it's where 95 to 99% of our work happens. I think it's closer to the 99%. But I'm really happy that it's not a choice I have to make because I think I can better serve my clients by being a hybrid. I love that we get to help clients choose what's best for them based on their unique circumstances. Well, that's a lot to take in, and I'm sure people will have questions. If they do, how do they contact you, Amy? They can reach us at 503-610-6510 or online at thimbleberryfinancial.com. And all the info is, of course, in the show notes as well. All right, Amy, until next time. (laughs) Sounds good, Michelle. Thanks. Registered representative securities offered through Cambridge Research, Inc., a broker-dealer, member FNIRA, SIPC. Investment Advisor Representative, Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Cambridge and Thimbleberry Financial are not affiliated.